Well, then I will uh, call this meeting of the Town of Hingham Select Board to order on April 12th, 2022. The time is 6.05 p.m. This meeting is being held remotely as an alternate means of public access pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, temporarily amending certain provisions of the open meeting law. You are hereby advised that this meeting and all communications during this meeting may be recorded by the Town of Hingham in accordance with the open meeting law. If any participant wishes to record this meeting, please notify the chair at the start of the meeting in accordance with Mass General Laws Chapter 30A, Section 20F, so that the chair may inform all other participants of said recording. Is there anyone else other than Harbor Media recording this evening? I am not seeing anyone. I will note for the record uh, that members of the select board participating this evening are Liz Klein and myself, Joe Fisher. We are expecting Bill Ramsey to show up shortly. Um, we do not have any uh, minutes to approve this, uh, uh, this evening. Um, and so I'm going to go off agenda uh, for just a, a few minutes. Uh, last week, we learned the sad news uh, that Dr. Edward J. Schreier had passed. Um, is Joyce, his, his wife, uh, with us? I don't see her name here. Tom, do you, do you see if Joyce is there? I, I don't see her name. Oh, yeah, either did I. Um, uh, so Ed Schreier, he's best known and loved for having served the town for nine years as a three-term member of the school committee. In 2020, when he attended his last meeting of the school committee, the chair of the committee at the time, Michelle Ayer, stated, quote, his dedication to Hingham Public School students and his knowledge will be impossible to replace. And then Michelle turned to Ed out of desperation and said, and I quote, Ed, please don't change your phone number in case we need to call you, unquote. <laughs> so unfortunately, our opportunity to call Ed Schreier has now expired. Many in town will miss him. All of us benefited from his commitment to our children and to our community. I've asked three of his colleagues and friends to share their thoughts with us. And first, I'd like to call on Kerry Nee, who is the current chair of the school committee. Thank you, Joe. Um, on behalf of the school committee, we were deeply saddened to learn that longtime Hingham resident and former school committee member, Dr. Ed Schreier, passed away on April 5th at age 79. After serving for three years in the US Navy Dental Corps, Dr. Ed spent over 40 years as a pediatric dentist serving countless South Shore children and adolescents. Dr. Ed was an active volunteer in town serving nine years as a member of the Hingham School Committee. Ed worked closely with the committee and administration to successfully execute the high school fields renovation and the new Hingham Middle School building. He particularly loved the outdoors and grounds and always brought insightful comments and suggestions that influenced the projects and upkeep. As the chair of the long range planning subcommittee, Ed brought relentless energy, enthusiasm and cheerfulness to capital planning, during which time he developed a deep understanding of the capital and facilities needs of the district. He continued to share that knowledge even after his last term on the school committee concluded. Ed was also deeply interested in education. He served and he started and served as the chair of the special education subcommittee. And in this role, he attended many CPAC, which is a special education parent advisory council meetings to try to understand the issues facing special education students and their families and to improve student learning. He also served as a founding board member and school committee liaison to South Shore SNAP, which is a special needs athletic partnership. Additionally, Dr. Ed served as a member of the Foster School Building Committee and was instrumental in the preliminary planning for the new Foster Elementary School building. He also served as the school committee liaison to Plymouth River Elementary and on countless other committees. Most recently, he continued his service to the Hingham Public Schools by volunteering to serve on the school department master plan review committee with the same enthusiasm and cheerful demeanor that he always demonstrated. Ed was a tireless advocate for Hingham students and staff and he will be missed. Our thoughts are with his wife, Joyce, and his family, including his two daughters, Rachel and Emily, their families, and his six grandchildren. I also just wanted to thank John Ferris for helping put these thoughts together. Um, Ed and John worked very closely on all of the projects that were mentioned. Harry, thank you. Um, your 
your thoughts, your perspective is, is um, it's comforting. Thank you. Uh, next, I'd like to call on Carol Falvey, our town clerk. She's a dear friend of Ed Schreier and served with him on the school committee. Carol. Thank you, Joe. I first met Ed as my kid's pediatrician, a pediatric dentist back when they were, were young. And he had the best, um, wonderful manner as a dentist for kids that were a little nervous about attending, the going to the dentist. And he would wow the kids with his theme related garb. I mean, it really helped to, to distract them. And, and he, he, we next ran into each other when we were running for school committee in 2011. And um, we became fast friends from that time. We both won the election and sat next to each other for years in the school committee where we would you know, consult with each other, talk over problems. I learned so much from Ed and his perspective on life. Um, he and his stories and, and all, I would always hear of chain of command from the Navy and how important that was to an orderly um, structure to, to life. So he, he was a problem solver. And as Kerry pointed out, accomplished so many things while we were on the school committee together. Um, we really became lifelong friends during this period. And he was always there to support me and my family. And as recently in my, my bid for town clerk last year, all my signs are in his barn. I mean, it's just such a, such a close connection and a wonderful person. I was heartbroken when I heard from Rachel that her dad had died. And um, I was heartbroken for his family, for Joyce, for Rachel, for Emily and their families. I was heartbroken for the town because as Kerry pointed out, he's such an amazing supporter of everything we do. And I was heartbroken for me. As, as Sean Farris said to me, Ed is family and he really is. He will be sorely missed by all of us. And, uh, thank you. Carol, thank, thank you. Um, finally, I'd like to call on Ray Estes. Uh, Ray is the current vice chair of the school building committee, a former member of the school committee and a close friend with Ed Schreier. Ray. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, you know, all the things that have been said are, are things that have been going through my mind for the last week. Uh, he touched so many lives uh, in our town and beyond in so many profound and lasting ways. I've really struggled to find the appropriate words for, for a week now, and I still struggle. Um, you know, some of the things that, that I think of when I think of Ed uh, are his boyish enthusiasm, you know, whether it was, you know, putting together campaign signs together in his in his barn or investigating the next project we were undertaking or following up with somebody about a particular interest of his or texting me to remind me that he had a bag of fertilizer that he wanted to give me uh, and I, I still have his handwritten notes a whole page long about what to do at different times of the year with fertilizers and landscaping tips it's really remarkable. You know, his, his generosity with his time, his thoughtfulness um, with everybody. Tom Mayo told me a great story a few days ago um, that I'll share briefly um, that Tom, Tom first started with us about five years ago now. Um, and Ed happened to meet him and um, asked him some questions. Ed always wanted to know about you, some personal things about you, what, what, what you were like, what you were interested in, what did you read? And I guess Tom shared with him a particular author that he had been reading recently. And the next morning, Tom showed up at his office and on his desk was the next book by that author. He's not quite sure how it got there, but it, he knew it was, was Dr. Ed. Um, that's just just a remarkable story that that speaks volumes about the kind of thoughtful man that he was. Um, it was so uh, enjoyable for me to watch how devoted he was to Joyce and his family. I, I had the opportunity and I've been fortunate to get to know many of his family members over the years. Um, and it's clear that as much of a loss that we're all experiencing, uh, their loss is so much, so much greater. And we use 
you know, we were use words like these um, that I was just saying, um, describing to describe him. And they they have particular meaning and significance, really, when when talking about Ed and and the man that he was. Um, his loss is really unspeakable. Um, there, obviously, you know, death is is a way of life, uh, and we all experience it in different ways at different times. Um, but the suddenness of this loss, and I think the meaningfulness of his relationships with so many of us. Um, you know, it, it, it's really a profound um, and difficult thing to take. Um, and really, more than anything else, personally, he was my great friend, and I'll miss him terribly. Ray, thank you. Um, Ed touched so many of us, not just for town business, but personal relationships, and we all feel it. Uh, there will be a memorial service on Saturday, May 7th. The time I believe has not yet been determined. It will be at the second parish church to be followed by a reception at the Hingham Heritage Museum. We send our condolences to his wife, Joyce and his family. Thank you. After that, it's tough to turn to uh, the mundane, but uh, we need to proceed. Thank you all for uh, who came for uh, Ed Schreier uh, this evening. Thank you. Uh, the next item on our agenda uh, is to consider approval of a special one day Walt, Walt wine and malt beverage license to Lucy Hancock for Beyond the Books, a celebration of the Hingham Public Library to be held outside at the Hingham Public Library on Friday. May 6th from 5.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. And is Lucy here? Here. There you are. Good, good to see you. Um, would you Bliss briefly describe what is being proposed? Yes, I will. We are having an event called Beyond the Books. It's a fundraiser to pr promote, promote fund funding for our, uh, our materials, our programs, our books. And it's gonna run actually from 5.30 to 8.30. That was an incorrect number on the agenda, but it's only half an hour longer than you had stated. Um, we're expecting 200 people. We have uh, sold a good number of tickets already and many sponsorships. And uh, what else do you need to know? It's under a tent on the lawn with Kate's table catering the event. We'll have uh, three raffles with prizes that take you beyond the books. There are 12 trips and you can win one of those 12 if you win the raffle. So uh, Joe, are you gonna go? <laughs> I am. Can you tell me uh, what you expect in terms of uh, attendance? I think we're hoping for 200 and that excludes the vendors and the staff who will be helping. But right now we sold about 150 tickets. Great. So get on that website and get yourself a ticket. Yes. Uh, Chief Jones, I believe you are here. Have you reviewed this? Do you have any concerns? Good evening, Joe. Uh, I have reviewed it. I've spoken with Lucy a, a number of times. She is gonna have a, a detailed presence at the event and I have no issues with it at all. Great. Um, are there, um, before we go to that, uh, Liz, any questions? No questions. It sounds like a, a beautiful event, Lucy. I know Kate's table does a great job. Um, and just Joe, so you know, the time is right on the application. Um, so no questions. Um, Tom, have you heard from Bill? I have, I have not. Okay. Um, are there any members of the public who have comments or questions on the application? Seeing none, uh, I'll accept the motion. And Liz, I'll note that you the, the time for the motion should be changed to 8.30. I will make a motion to approve the issuance of a special one day wine and malt beverages license to Lucy Hancock for Beyond the Books, a celebration of the Hingham Public Library to be held outside at the Hingham Public Library oh. on Friday, May 6, 2022, from 5.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. I'll second that. 
We do a roll call vote. Liz? Aye. Joe? Aye. And Bill is absent. Lucy, um, should be a great event. Thank you. Thank you very much. Look forward yeah. to seeing you. Anybody else who wants to take it, get on the website and get one. It's going to be well, wait a, great a minute, Lucy, Lucy. Tell them what the website address is so they know where to go. Oh well, just uh, Google Ham Public Library. And okay, and it's Google, right there. And right on the first page of the library website, there's a big banner that says "Beyond the Books." You click there, and it'll take you to ticket sales, sponsorships, uh, details on where the trips are that we're offering for prizes. So, oh, there's Bill. <laughs> just in time. <laughs> yes. Um, one second here. Um, so, uh, Michelle, am I authorized to share my screen? Yes, you are. Okay. So let me uh, do this one minute. Let's see here. Um, okay, Lucy, is this it? <laughs> Yes, that is it. Very nice. Right here, beyond the books. Yeah. Click here, right for the uh, for the yep. ticket sales. You go to tickets. You find out about the raffle. Raffle tickets are ten dollars a piece. You can buy lots of those. You can even buy ten tickets for seventy five or six for fifty. I think I've forgotten the exact number. But um, we are selling tickets online and also selling tickets at the library. So if you do come in to do something at the library, you can buy a raffle ticket or an event ticket. You, you realize that most of us, when they see the word overdue associated with the library, it instills fear in us. We no longer have fines, as you know. And one <laughs> of the things we're hoping is we raise enough money on events like this that will offset any fines we might have collected in the future. Great. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Great. Joe, and do you mind if I jump in just real quick on something? Uh, before you do, I want to welcome uh, Bill Ramsey has joined the meeting. Um, and uh, Bill, we did just take our first vote approving uh, the event at the library, and I'm sure you wouldn't have objected if you were here. <laughs> Absolutely not. Thank you for welcoming me. I would have uh, wholeheartedly supported it. Good luck with it, Lucy. Great. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, Tom. I just want to take this uh, quick opportunity. She'll kill me later, but to embarrass Lucy. And, uh, and I know Lucy is heading out of town sometime soon. Uh, we are all going to miss her greatly. But Lucy, you've been a, a great champion of Hingham for a long time. Um, you were ADCOM chair when I was uh, fresh in this role and uh, you walked me through process, you taught me process, you <laughs> held my feet to the fire more than once, <laughs> you, as you do with all of us and, uh, and you made things happen. So anyway, thank you very much. You're gonna be greatly missed by me uh, especially, but I think by the town as a whole. So um, anyway. Thank you very much. You. I will say you can take Lucy out of Hingham, but you can't take <laughs> Hingham out of Lucy. Excellent. <laughs> Tom, you, you didn't tell her about the ball and chain that uh, we <laughs> <laughs> we're going to have Chief Jones set up roadblocks at the road at the town line. <laughs> Got it. Thanks. I appreciate Thank the thoughts. Thank you. Thank you. Next item on our agenda is to consider approval of the special one day wine and malt beverages license to Michael Snowdale on behalf of Stellwagen Beer Company for the Spring Fest at Ware River Farm to be held at Ware River Farm on Saturday, April 23rd, 2022 from 9.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. And I believe we have uh, Michael Snowdale with us, uh, Ann Smith-White, uh, who's the uh, director of the, um, she, it, she's one of the uh, South Shore trustees, I believe. Yes, so if you could, I'll start with Michael and then move to Anne, if you could just explain what is being proposed. Joe, I don't think Michael is here. Oh, I'm sorry, I thought I saw his name. But I do see Ms. Smith-White. Okay, so then uh, Anne, the floor is yours. Hi, everybody. Um, so I am the South Shore Portfolio Director um, this event at Weir River Farm is our traditional spring festival. Um, it's um, special this year because it's happening the day before Earth Day. So we're going to be having composting workshops and sheep herding workshops and um, earth friendly vendors. Um, the barnyard will be open with educators and 4-H kids stationed there to teach about the animals and we'll have crafts and games. 
and food trucks and beer trucks. Um, another thing that's really special this year is the first hour from 10 to 11 is going to be a sensory friendly hour for families um, and individuals living with autism. So it's a special year and um, we're really excited. We're hoping a lot of folks from Hingham will come. So um, this is appropriate. You do know that towards the end of the meeting, we will have a proclamation on Arbor Day. And Earth Day. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, uh, right, Arbor Day and Earth, and Earth Day. So um, uh, we, we are glad that this is before us. Um, Liz, any questions? Um, just, just one question. Um, and I noticed there's not an alternate date. So there's no rain date, is that correct? Right. It's okay. Rain Great. And you're, um, you're estimating 2000 people throughout the day. Um, I think that's ambitious. I would <laughs> say probably close 1200 to 1500 is what we're hoping for. Okay. Great. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Bill Ramsey. I have no questions familiar with these events and good best of luck with it, Ann. Thank you. Uh, and I should have asked the chief first, um, I know he's reviewed the application uh, with this many uh, expected to attend. Are you comfortable with how this is going to be managed, Chief? Good evening again, Joe. Yes, I've reviewed the application and I am comfortable uh, with the event and the plans they have in place. Okay. Are there any members of the public with comments or questions? Um, and so how do people uh, get to go to this thing? Do they, is there a website? Is there information about the, how, how we can go? If I've got a friend, I would, I, what, where, where do I tell this friend to look? Um, if you, probably the easiest thing is to Google Weir River Farm and then just click on the trustees link. And then there's a, there's a thing that you have to scroll down. There's a things to do page that has all of our events and buy tickets that way. Um, I am looking as we speak, this is one of the benefits of having a virtual meeting to see if in fact that's there. And I am, uh, I am not seeing that. So uh, we wanna make sure that people can attend. See, can I put the link in the chat maybe? Yeah, so actually I am going to, I'm gonna to share my screen again. Um, So this is where we should be. He, is that? that this looks, is the trustees website? Yes, so scroll oh, down. I'm scrolling down. And if you keep scrolling down, there's a place to click that says things to do. So keep going. You have to go a long way. We feel like we're on a hike. There we go, upcoming events. So. There's a lot happening in April. If you click on, you see the little button that says view more, go up a little bit. Yes. I just know, norm okay, so click on that and then the next screen, it'll be on there. We have a lot of programs happening for April vacation. So we have to sort of slide by all of those. Okay. Going just a little bit farther. Up, oh, you gotta click on the number two down here. <laughs> you are making it difficult for... I'm sorry, I should have given you... There it is, Spring Green Festival at Weir River Farm. Okay. Um, okay, and this is where people can get the information and view more. That's right. Um, uh, just so you know, I mean, we sometimes get uh, contacted by residents saying, I wish I knew and I didn't know how to get it, um, get the information. So now the world knows how to do this. Great. <laughs> Excellent. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, we've got no public comments. I am prepared to accept the motion. Make a motion to approve the issuance of a special one-day wine and malt beverages license to Michael Snowdale on behalf of Stellwagen Beer Company for the Spring Fest at Weir River Farm to be held at Weir River Farm on Saturday, April 23rd, 2022 from 9.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Second. Roll call vote. Liz. Aye. Bill. Aye. And Joe, aye, you are approved and looking forward to the event. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, the next item on our event, um, and it looks very similar, is to consider approval of 
the special one day wine and malt beverages license to Stephanie Aquino for the Spring Fest at Ware River Farm to be held at Ware River Farm on Saturday, April 23rd, 2022 from 9.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Uh, Stephanie, are you here? I am here and I was not as prepared as everyone else. I'm at Ocho Cafe for dinner. <laughs> okay. Did I pronounce your did I pronounce your last name correctly? Uh, the last name's Aquino, but Aquino. that's all right. <laughs> okay. So I, I suspect it's very similar to um, what we just right. heard. Anything you'd like to add? Nothing. I'm so excited. It's my first time there. I think it's gonna be so fun. Great. Um, and Chief, any concerns with this application? Uh, none. It's uh, the same event as last time, and I'm comfortable with the plans that the trustees have in place for the event. Terrific. Um, Liz, any questions? No questions. Thank you. And Bill, any questions? No, I, just a comment. I, I think it's great that Weir River um, rotates through the local craft beers, craft craft breweries. You know, I, it, it's nice that they 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 use Untold, they use Barrel House Z, they use um, Vitamin C, uh, a lot of the, uh, a lot of the local ones. So. I know a lot of the, the brewery owners have ties to Hingham. So it's great to see that they rotate um, the different breweries that have these events. So it's great. It's good to see it. And they're all, they're all good. So, yes. We definitely appreciate it. We need it right now. So I, yes. I love that these events are available to us. Are there any members of the public with comments or questions? I am seeing none. I'll accept a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the issuance of a special one day wine and malt beverages license to Stephanie Aquino on behalf of Barrel House Z for the Spring Fest at Weir River Farm to be held at Weir River Farm on Saturday, April 23rd, 2022 from 9.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Second. Roll call vote. Liz. Aye. Bill. Aye. And Joe. Aye. Approved. April 23rd should be a great day. So looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you. The next item on our agenda is to consider appointments of assistant harbor masters and deputy <laughs> shellfish constable. Uh, the potential candidates we have are Joseph Driscoll, Michael McHugh, Danny Sousa, Raymond Abreu, Michael Riley, and John Algrid. And Ken Corson, our harbor master, should be with us, as is Chief Jones. So, Ken, I'd like to turn this over to you to um, explain what is being proposed and to introduce the candidates. Sure. Thank you for having me um, here this evening. Um, there's essentially um, two different positions. There is the position of assistant harbor master, and then there's the position for deputy shellfish constable. So for the position of assistant harbor master, there's several candidates. Um, Joe Driscoll, that position is the, the head assistant um, harbor master. And that's, um, that's a full-time position. He's been in it for a number um, of years now. So looking for his reappointment to that position for three years. And then the other positions um, of assistant harbor master are um, part-time, um, part-time seasonal. And those are for Michael McHugh, Danny Souza, Ray Abreu, and Michael Riley. Um, the other position of Deputy Shellfish Constable, that's for John Elgard. He's currently our, um, our clerk, our Harbor Master Office Clerk. So this is um, a position that we really haven't filled in, or at least during my time here as Harbor Master. And to my knowledge, we haven't filled this position um, with the previous Harbor Master. So with the rise of, um, the shellfish in the harbor and shellfishing actually coming back um, and the diggers digging, I'd like to give him um, this appointment so he can help out with um, managing our shellfish resource. So he'll continue on in his position, but he'll have some, he'll have the ability to um, assist with the management of that resource. So he'll stay in his current position, but he'll, but he'll have some additional functions if needed. Um, that's kind of the summary of what I'm asking the board to do here. And I guess if you have any questions, I can expand upon it. That's great. Um, let me ask, assuming that these individuals are appointed, when would their term begin and when would it end? 
so it's a three year term and I believe the way um, I'd like to see it happen is it would just, so there are terms, or at least three of them, their terms expire, I think it's in June. Um, one of them had already expired. I think Mike Riley's already expired. So his would start now and the other three would just continue on when they expire in June for three more years. And this is a question, Ken, both for you as well as Tom Mayo. Um, what are the budget implications of making these appointments? So we have um, we have a budget um, of funds to to basically to pay the staff. So regardless of the number of staff we have, um, we have X amount of funds, and that's what we use to to pay them. So um, when we do the schedule, we look at the amount of um, budgetary funds we have, and we budget and staff accordingly. So remember, Joe, these are these are part time positions. Yeah, Ken, Ken brings them in as needed. Except for one is full time, and he has a you know a line item set for him. Right. So, so none of these items would be a surprise for those who look at the budget. Right. Correct. Yep, that's my understanding. Liz, any questions? Oh, thank you, Ken, for the explanation and and the the um, my memo. I, I don't have any further questions, Joe. Bill. I had one quick question, Ken. I know if we do make the motion to appoint Mr. Algrid as the um, deputy shellfish constable, are you by law the actual constable? That's correct. As okay. Harbor Master, I'm also appointed the shellfish constable for the town. That's what I thought. Okay, great. Thank you. You're welcome. And Chief Jones, uh, do you have any comments on what's being proposed? Uh, I don't. I know all the employees. They they all currently work for us and been performing well in their uh, duties. So I have no uh, no further comments. And um, this is this is for Ken as well as for the chief. Um, is there a um, uh, how do I say this? Uh, what sort of review is done for those who are being reappointed? Or is there a, a new uh, background check that's done, or is there additional reviews in terms of performance and Am I correct to assume that whatever review has been done, uh, these candidates have passed with flying colors? Yeah, so there's a performance review that I do every year um, for staff and those reviews have been done and um, everything was, was excellent. So no, no issues there. Great. Um, are there members of the public with comments or questions concerning the ass assistant harbor masters and the deputy shellfish constable appointments. I am seeing none, so I'll accept the motion. Make a motion to uh, reappoint Joseph Driscoll as full-time head assistant harbor master for a three-year term ending June 30th, 2025. Second. Roll call vote, Liz. Aye. Bill. Aye. And Joe, aye. Next motion. I will make a motion to appoint Michael McHugh, Danny Souza, Raymond Abreu, and Michael Riley as part-time assistant harbor masters for a three-year term ending June 30th, 2025. Second. Roll call vote, Liz. Aye. Bill. Aye. And Joe, aye. Approved. And one more vote. I'd make a motion to appoint John Algrid as deputy shellfish constable for a Three-year term ending June 30th, 2025. Second. And another roll call vote. Liz. Aye. Bill. Aye. And Joe. Aye. Unanimous. All the uh, reappointments and appointments. Uh, Ken, excellent presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next item on our agenda is for us to hear uh, the Town of Hingham hazard mitigation plan for 2022. And this is an update. Um, and uh, Tom, I'm going to actually turn this over to you and then you'll introduce who will be making the presentations. Sure. So this is a statutory required uh, plan that we put together. Um, it's uh, done in this case with um, the Metropolitan Area Planning Council, uh, Chief Murphy and the fire department um, work closely on it. I know Deputy Lachance had a hand in it as did um, as did Emily Sullivan in the conservation department. Um, so I think I'll turn it over to the chief to walk us through everything. And then I believe um, 
Ms. Herbst from the uh, MAPC is here to speak to what was done, but Chief. Thank you, uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, so real quick, like Tom had kind of mentioned, um, we are required to update our hazard mitigation plan every five years. Uh, the plan looks at natural hazards around town, weather related events, flooding and things like that. So in order to us uh, to receive certain federal funding to, uh, to mitigate some of those risks, we have to identify them in this plan that's required every five years. Um, so we um, contracted with MAPC. Um, they did our last update five or six years ago. Um, we contracted with them again to do for this current update. Um, we made a team up of different departments around town, like Tom said, police, fire, emergency management, uh, the planning department, building department, harbor master, board of health, public works, conservation, town engineer, basically everybody, um, people with uh, local knowledge, historic knowledge uh, that really, really put the plan together. Um, I, I know he's not on right now. I really want to thank Randy, Randy Sylvester. His historical knowledge on a lot of this stuff was instrumental. Um, I was kind of the, the project liaison for this, and this was my first time. So Randy was very, very valuable to me. So I do want to thank him for that. Um, so Anne from MAPC is on with us. I think she has about a 10 minute presentation or so for us. I'll turn it over to Anne. Yeah, Anne, please. Okay, thank you. And do you need to screen share or are you? Just yes, and I will uh, do that now, I hope. Uh, is that working? Perfect. Okay, thank you. Um, so thank you to the select board for the opportunity to present the, the work really done by a team of town staff. Uh, I'm an environmental planner with MAPC uh, and as already stated, we're, we're presenting the, the final draft of the updated plan and it will be available for comment for another week. I'll, I'll give you the link for that to see it. Uh, and then we submit it both to MEMA and to FEMA for approval. Um, after FEMA approves the draft plan, it actually comes back to the select board for adoption. So tonight's presentation is informational. Uh, it's, it's not the night that you need to take action. Um, and I, I see your agenda is long, so I, I, will, I will move through this fairly quickly. Um, oh, no, it's not gonna move for me. Um, so uh, Lou mentioned that we had a, a broad team and really under his leadership, uh, we, we worked on the plan together, so you can see it. it. We did really cover all the bases of people who would have the knowledge we needed to be involved. Um, so hazard mitigation plans focus on natural weather-driven driven occurrences. So not things like terrorism or, or chemical spills. Uh, the town has other plans uh, for things like that. Um, it's also not an emergency response plan. The focus really is on taking preventative steps to reduce the impact of natural hazards. Um, and hazard mitigation planning started in the year 2000 uh, with the Federal Disaster Mitigation Act. And, and the goal really was for all municipalities to, across the country to have a plan. And it is not actually technically required of the municipality, uh, but, the, but FEMA does have a significant carrot. And that is in order for the town to be eligible for all their grant programs, you need to have a plan in place. Um, so uh, the team identified potential risk areas. Uh, so this includes uh, known flooding areas uh, and a number of places where there's the potential for brush fire, not necessarily where there has been brush fire. In our region, um, flooding is the most frequent hazard and that, that is certainly uh, true in, in Hingham as well. So one of the things we do is map all sorts of critical facilities. Uh, we include disaster response sites, municipal facilities, places that could need services. Uh, we overlay that with what we know about flooding and the other hazards that we mapped, and it just gives us an opportunity to analyze vulnerabilities. Um, we also take a look at where future development is anticipated to take a look at what vulnerabilities may be there. Uh, and for the first time, uh, this plan has incorporated future climate risks. So I'll just take the next couple of slides to show you the kinds of things that we look at. Um, so this slide shows tree cover and high heat areas in Hingham. So the pink areas identify higher heat locations. Uh, it was done using remote sensing on a, on a hot cloudless day. Um, and so the pink is somewhat arbitrarily represents the hottest 5% of, of land in the MAPC region. And typically these are places that have more paving and rooftops, fewer trees. Um, you can see Hingham has really pretty sig significant and substantial tree cover, but there's some high heat areas mostly commercial, often though it's schools. Uh, we think about this partly because people who 
don't have access to air conditioning uh, can be vulnerable to illness from heat stress, wh whether or not really they're in a high heat area. Um, so this map uh, took a look at, at flood claim locations from March 2010. We had to enlarge them for privacy requirements, but some people may remember uh, that we had very severe flooding in March 2010. It led to a federal disaster declaration. And we think of March 2010 as sort of a, an example of the type of flooding predicted to occur more often as the climate warms, uh, meaning extreme rainfall amounts falling in the winter as rain rather than snow on ground saturated with snow melt uh, and while vegetation is still dormant. Um, so in Hingham, only 6% of the claims were actually in the FEMA 1% chance flood zone. Uh, that's sort of typical across our region that we found that. And I think that really highlights uh, the issues that all urban and suburban areas struggle with uh, in terms of stormwater flooding. Um, uh, we took a look obviously at, at sea level rise projections and this is the map that was uh, used for Hingham's fairly in-depth study uh, conducted in 2015. Um, we also wanted to think about who would be impacted by climate hazards. So one thing really to note is that not everybody is affected equally. Um, so some of us are more physically susceptible to impacts, particularly heat, uh, including young children, pregnant women, and older adults, uh, as well as people with chronic illnesses. Um, so you can see that there, you know, we project a high percentage of adults uh, or see a high percentage of, of older adults uh, living alone. And while Hingham remains a predominantly white community, it, it has become more diverse. And you can see that there are differences in health outcomes by race. Uh, so Hingham's black and Latino populations are hospitalized at a, at a higher rate than whites or Asians. I think reflecting sort of a long standing, what we understand about social inequities can lead to, to differential health outcomes. Um, and again, we think about heat because it's, it's a real asthma trigger. And finally, of course, people who have limited financial resources will have more difficulty preparing for and recovering from hazard events. Uh, and again, even though Hingham is a relatively high income community, uh, roughly 20% of the population is considered low income and 6% and uh, below the poverty level. Uh, so this is a, a partial list, a little bit of sort of highlights of the project priorities that have been identified for the next year. We organize them by risk. Um, it's really the heart of the plan. Uh, they include a range of activities from infrastructure projects to natural resource protection to regulatory strategies, outreach, in some cases, additional study. Um, you can see the inland flooding uh, includes specific projects and a, and a focus on identifying uh, culvert risks. Uh, the coastal projects also focus on specific risk areas, particularly the harbor um, and a study of options for Bear Cove and Beale, Co Beale Cove. Um, other things identified were the need for a generator for town hall to, to both to serve town hall, but also for its function as a warming and cooling center. That's the kind of thing that it, uh, FEMA funding could, could potentially uh, support. Um, so we, tree strategy, we thought about tree strategies, both for heat management and also uh, in terms of their hazards for down trees, both for, for people and property. Uh, also talked a bit about uh, water storage management that was a big issue in, in the MVP report um, and strategies that, that the new uh, Hingham's new managing of the, of the water system will undertake. Uh, and also, uh, outreach uh, for Lyme disease. Um, so again, anything that is in the plan is something that potentially at least the, the town could look to FEMA for, for financial support to address. Um, so the draft plan has been on the town website. Um, you can find it by going to the emergency department webpage. Um, we welcome anyone to send comments for another week by April 19th. Uh, those will be included in the plan. And, and if there are specific new suggestions, they'll be reviewed by the team. And I'm certainly also happy to take comments or questions now. Um, so thank you. Joey, Joey you're muted. <clears throat> You missed my wonderful words here. Um, so uh, Deputy Chief uh, Lachance, anything that you wanted to add to that? Uh, no, I'd just like to say thank you to everybody that was involved. It was a long process, but like I said, we had a great team of uh, town employees that helped me get through this process. Um, some questions for Ann. I know you said people have until the 19th for public comment. Then from there, you send it off to MEMA? 
Yes, it goes, I, I'll send it directly to MEMA. They'll review it. It then goes through a second review to FEMA. They, sometimes they have sort of little editorial comments that they do will correct those when, when they're all set. Uh, FEMA basically gives it their stamp of approval, which is approved pending adoption. And then it will come back to the select board uh, and we'll, we'll provide you with an adoption motion uh, to, to make it official. And, and then, then it'll go back to FEMA and they will give it its, their official blessing. So I know timeframes with the federal government can be a little unknown. What, what would you what would you anticipate for a time well, frame? For well, I know I know that the town is is interested in in, in immediately pursuing um, some grant opportunities. So when I send it to MEMA, I will give them that heads up. Uh, that and typically typically it is hard to predict how long it's going to take them. But when they understand that uh, potential funding is in the balance, they they we our experience has been they're able to get it done. So I would hope that by the end of June, uh, we would have approval. Excellent, thank you. Chief Murphy, anything that you would like to add? I just uh, wanted to echo Deputy Lachance's, uh, you know, thanks to Anne and her team from MAPC and all of the um, staff from uh, the town of Hingham that worked on this and anyone else that contributed to it. So thank you. Great. Thanks. I, I'd also like to echo the thanks to the town team. I just guess I want to let the select board know that you're you're well served by the group that, that worked on this we know we're well served we're, we're <laughs> proud of these folks don't 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 boost their ego more than <laughs> um but i i do have a question about the group and the review um because uh one part of the town that is very much involved in in some of the uh responses to hazards is uh the Hingham municipal light plant um particularly with down trees, weather events. Um, and I'm wondering to what extent that they have had an opportunity to review and comment uh, on, on the mitigation plan. Um, they didn't have much directly in involvement. Um, a lot of that was through DPW and Randy and with, uh, with the tree department, as far as talking, there was some talk of, you know, the electrical lines that come into Hingham that go through to serve to Hull, um, I believe, Emily Wentworth, correct me if I'm wrong, Emily, we talked about the, uh, was it National Grid had a plan to come in and clear some of the, the trees over the main lines coming through. Is Emily on? Yep. 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 Sorry, She's Lou. Yep. Um, actually, it may have been Emily Sullivan and or Lonnie Fournier. I think there was a filing with the Conservation Commission that tipped us off to that. So um, there were some loose references to I, yeah, I do think that came from Lonnie Fournier, who, uh, and, uh, and I know one of the, you know, goals in the plan is for, for in, increasing resources for tree management, because in almost all suburban locations, and if you look at your tree map, there's, there's reasons why uh, that could be an issue. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's not just tree management, it's a supply of power. Um, Correct. So Correct. Um, I, if we can make sure that there's an outreach to HMLP. Uh, and I'd have similar comments with respect to the Ware River water system. Uh, I didn't see that they were uh, directly part of this review. Um, you did talk about the, the, you know, the, the water supply, but that's the company that really needs to, um, the, the entity that, that needs to have their input heard. Um, and then uh, finally, I, I would ask to what extent was the school department involved in this review? Because when these events happen, they are directly affected. Uh, and I'm thinking of um, Foster School, which is good, which is in an area where flooding is likely, um, and uh, to what extent that there are uh, responses uh, involved. And I just want to make sure that uh, the school department has been informed and has been given an opportunity to review this as well. Yeah, we can we can definitely reach out to them. Okay. Um, so that's HMLP, the Rare River Water, Rare River Water System, and the school department. Um, Liz Klein, comments. Thank you uh, to everyone who worked on this. Um, I appreciate reviewing the report and, and your presentation as well. I noticed, um, as you mentioned, most are weather related um, emergencies, but I did notice at the end, COVID-19 is listed as well. Um, so are there other mitigation strategies for pandemics or uh, you know other, other things related to COVID that you foresee needing to plan for? Um, I, I 
COVID actually isn't something. Uh, invasive species was there and Lyme disease, which, but I, maybe I'm mistaken, but I, I don't, it's, it's not a topic we covered because it's not considered a, a natural hazard. It, it really is, okay. is all weather driven. I apologize. All weather driven. There was some okay. confusion. Okay. Um, and what sort of feedback are you looking for before the 19th? What, what would be helpful? Well, I, I will warn you that the report is about 120 pages long. So um, I, I, I think probably what people would be most interested in is, is looking for the section on mitigation items. In other words, the things that the town is proposing to prioritize for the next five years. I would, I would guess that that would be of great interest. We'd be happy to have any feedback, but I, I do want to be realistic with people's time. Sure. <laughs> okay. Um, so the, and so that's the intent, right? To have the mitigation kind of like an implementation plan in terms of timeline, and then is the expectation that we would secure grant funding to to implement those items. So you'll see many items there. FEMA actually requires something in every under every category, even if it's not a high priority of the town earthquake, for example. Mm -hmm. um, so there are many items. Uh, there is not an expectation that the town will make progress on all of them. Uh, typically, you know, some things get done and some things don't. But it, but they are the items that that the town staff identified, and they and things there potentially uh, are are eligible for funding. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, before I turn it to Bill, just Liz to follow up, I think what you were looking at is the top of page 12 of the report where COVID-19 is listed uh, as um, one of the disasters. Uh, so that is... Oh, I, okay. It is, yeah. I, I Thank you very much for that clarification. I, I Yes, we, we are required to list every federal disaster, but it's not yeah. considered a natural disaster for um, for for yep. the purposes of the plan. Thank you very much. Got it, okay, thank you. Mr. Ramsey. Yeah, thank you uh, for your work on this and thank you to Deputy Chief Lachance and your team as well. Um, you know, I, I think as a board, we, we are uh, taking steps to um, deal with um, weather issues and climate change. Um, we're taking steps at the harbor, defensive steps at the harbor. Uh, we are moving forward with hiring a sustainability coordinator, just to name a few things, what we're doing in town. But, you know, going forward over the next, you know, 5, 10, 15 years, uh, I see every facet of our municipal governance going to be involved with this fight in terms of dealing with weather related disasters and climate change going forward. So this is great. And I'm um, looking forward to the final report and hopefully getting some grant money to help us in this uh, battle ahead. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, Tom. Uh, and I'm going to ask Tom, Michelle, and Art if uh, either of you or any of you have comments uh, from the town's perspective on this. The only thing I'll add is that I, I just want to remind everyone, uh, Chief Murphy and his team with Deputy Lachance, Deputy Levinson, and others, uh, and the success they've had in getting FEMA grants. A lot of, a lot of that is, is um, predicated on reports like this and, and, um, and studies like this being in place. So uh, this is a great project, and we will... Um, I'm, I can say fairly confidently, we will realize benefits from this, significant benefits from this from this work. So uh, thank you, Lou, for everything you did and, uh, and you as well. Great. Michelle? Nothing to add. Thanks for everyone's work on this. And, and Art? Well, all I would add is an important part of, the, of completing a plan like this is to look back at previous plan and identify what's been done. Uh, and uh, I think that in my brief participation in the process, we saw that there was there has been sustained attention to the plan, and a lot of it has been implemented in the previous uh, over the previous years, and that reflects you know great ongoing attention from the entire team. Thank you. Great. And um, I do see our harbor master Ken Corson is still on the line, and the harbor is. Um, in many ways, the epicenter of, of some of these activities. Uh, Ken, is there anything you wanted to add? No, I don't have um, anything particular to add. I think it's great that we're getting this done um, because we do have um, clearly some significant um, changes taking place at the harbor relating to the weather changes. So I think it's great that we're getting the, this done and um, it's a great, it's a great process. Great. Any member of the public 
comments or questions on this draft report. I am seeing no hands raised, um, which means, <laughs> Anne, you did a superb job. Um, thank you. And we really appreciate the efforts. Um, uh, and I think Bill said it best that this is an area that not only the select board, but many boards, many volunteers uh, will be focusing on in the months and years ahead. So this is critical to the town. Thank you again for, for your efforts. Oh, well, thank you for your time. Thank you. Okay. Next item on our agenda, it is 7 p.m., uh, is to consider approval of the request of LSF Hingham LLC doing business as Legal C Bar 96 Derby Street for an alteration of a licensed premises. Um, and I believe, is, is Donna Cruz here? Do I see her? So I, I, I don't see her name on the list, but I, I do see um, Victoria McGuire and Caroline Hesberg for, representing WS Development, the property oh. owner. Oh, great. Um, so, uh, Emily, do you want to uh, take the lead on this? This is for um, Legal C. Yeah, I, I'm happy to do a brief introduction, sure. um, but you know, and WS can back me up. Um, the Legal C um, restaurant up at the Derby Street Shops is seeking a permanent alteration of their licensed premises in order to maintain essentially what the select board has previously approved through the OTS. Right. Um, temporary policy. So that allows 30 of their current seats to be flexed seasonally from indoors to outdoors, in part mm -hmm. along the shared sidewalk and in part um, within a portion of the parking lot that would result in the displacement of, of six parking spaces. Um, I can confirm that the, the planning board um, and the zoning board have both approved, um, or excuse me, the planning board in this case, um, approved a parking permit and a, a site plan um, to allow this also on a permanent basis. Um, and which means they've looked at the parking and they believe there's uh, adequate parking to accommodate this. Yeah, WS Development, um, they track their parking supply routinely as part of their ongoing permits with the town. Um, so they demonstrated they're somewhere between four and you know north of 500 spaces available during the months where this outdoor dining area would be um, operating. It, it would not be operating conversely during the month of December when um, there is very little excess of supply. Got it. Um, do we have a representative from the company who would like to, uh, to address us? Hi everyone, Victoria McGuire from WS Development. I'm joined by Carolyn Hesberg, the GM at Derby Street Shops and Mark Hayward from Legal C Bar. Um, Emily did a great job summarizing our request tonight, um, but we're happy to answer any questions you might have. She always does a great job summarizing mm -hmm. these things. Um, and we really appreciate your participation this evening. And um, we recognize how important uh, these sorts of changes are for not just your restaurant, but other restaurants as well. Um, Liz, any questions? Um, just, just to confirm that it's not adding any additional seats. The flex seating means if there are tables outside, then there's reduced seating inside. Is that correct? Absolutely. We monitor our cap on seating very closely. And so all of our tenants, including legal C, know that if they flex seats, it, they can't go above their approved number. Got it. Okay. Thank you. This is Mark here from Legal C Bar. Sorry, I just got permission to speak. Um, yeah, our cap is 193, whether it's inside or outside, and we'll be maintaining that. Got it. Okay. Great. Thank you. Bill, any questions? Uh, no questions, Mark. Just uh, great to see you doing this. It's going to be a nice addition to um, uh, Derby Street and people walking around up there. And um, uh, great job. Thank you very much. And um, I do not see um, our police chief still on the line, but Tom, am I correct that uh, he's reviewed it and uh, no police concerns? Yes, yeah, that's right. Great. Are there any members of the public? with comments or questions. 
I am seeing none and I'm prepared to accept the motion on the LSF Hingham LLC uh, application. I will make a motion to approve the request of LSF Hingham LLC doing business as Legal C Bar 96 Derby Street for an alteration of licensed premises in accordance with the application of for alteration of premises information filed with the town of Hingham on March 24th, 2022 and subject to the approval of the Alcoholic Beverages Control Commission. Second. Roll call vote, Liz. Aye. Bill. Aye. And Joe, aye. We are approved. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much, much, everyone. Appreciate it. Thank you. Next item is to consider approval of the request of Localis Taco LLC, doing business as Localis Taco y Tequila, six Crow Point Lane for an alteration of licensed premises. And I think that I see Scott, uh, who's is Scott here on the line? I am here. Thank oh, there you, you are. Uh, yeah. So are you the one to walk us through this? Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Uh, uh, for the record, Scott Golding from Drew and Tatua Morgan. Uh, also here is Douglas McGregor and Brian McLaughlin, who are the principals um, of Localis Taco LLC. And Brian McLaughlin is also the license uh, manager. Um, so we are here for an alteration of premises. This is similar to what you just heard for Legal C Bar. Um, Localis Tacos um, has operated under the OTS, OTS approval you granted them last July. Um, they operated successfully last year. Um, they're seeking to essentially keep the, the same area, same number of seats, um, to be able to flex seasonally, to have the outdoor seating within the eight parking spaces that you guys or the board previously approved. Um, we worked closely with Emily as well as the rest of the board and as well as the planning staff. Um, we have received a modification of the site plan approval for Crow Point Village, um, a modification of the special permit A3, um, for the parking between those two properties, as well as a special permit A2 granted by the CBA um, related to the restaurant, which they all approved the outdoor seating. Um, the planning board made an, a finding that there was sufficient parking um, based on the peak demands, as well as um, Jeff Dirk's traffic review that was actually done originally as part of the original site plan review done in 2020. So um, the board was fine with that. They added some conditions, which included um, as far as the special permit A3, a look back, but otherwise um, there were really no issues. Um, so they're just seeking to kind of carry forward with what was previously approved and um, we're hoping to make this permanent. So I can answer any questions you may have. So. Yeah, because I do see the planning board site plan review um, and then the, um, the zoning board's uh, special permit. And uh, finally, it was the, um, the the um, decision by the planning board on the special permit A3. Yes. Um, so it looks it looks to me as if you've got a complete package. Um, do your clients uh, wish to add any comments? Um, I'm not sure if they do, but I'm happy to have, <laughs> let them speak. So Brian, go no, ahead. No, 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 I, I have no comments. I appreciate all of this. I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to a great summer. So thank you very much for considering us. Great. Um, and Tom, again, just uh, to confirm that our police department has reviewed, I know traffic has looked at it, uh, that uh, everyone is comfortable. They are and they have, yep. Great. Liz, any questions? Just a quick question. I am familiar with the, the setup I've eaten out there. Um, so are there, there's barriers or the Jer Jersey barriers around, is that, well, is that correct? Yes, there will yes, be, so those are part of the approval. It'll be sorry, the same sorry. setup as, oh, sorry. Sorry, Brian, no, we we're talking about. Oh, continue. Uh, yes, so the, the barriers that were set up last year as part of the OTS approval will continue as part of this approval. There will be the, the barriers that will, those will actually be removed in the winter time, but they will be in place anytime, certainly that there is outdoor seating and the entire licensed premises will be surrounded by fencing. Okay, great. Excellent, thank you. Bill. Uh, Brian, good to see you. Good to see you too, Bill. Yeah, you know, it's, it, as I told you last fall when you talked to me about this process, you know, the only thing better than having your tacos is eating them outside on a warm, uh, warm summer day. So, uh, congratulations! It's great to see you and uh, and Doug doing so well as a business. So happy to support you guys tonight, and like, congratulations. Thank you very much. I appreciate all the help and support. Great, Emily. Is there anything that you wanted to add? 
No, oh, I think everything relevant has been covered. Yes. May I ask a quick question and not to derail any of this um, for, for, and this is out of curiosity and not to take too long, but for, for special permit stuff like, a, like Cinco de Mayo or, or other spots where we will need additional seating or we'd request for additional seating, could I still put in those one day permits and go through that whole process um, using that outdoor space? That's just out of curiosity. As we know, Cinco de Mayo is kind of coming up, but even for next year or whatever it may be. I believe the answer is yes to that. Scott? Uh, I would like to be able to speak with Sharon and uh, right. and, and with Brian on his plans, but I, I believe the answer would be yes as well. So Exactly uh, what I was gonna suggest. Sharon needs to be a part of that conversation. Right. I don't see why there wouldn't be. Right, right. So, Sharon's world. so so the longer answer is you need to go through the process, um, but Great. there's nothing that you're doing here this evening that would prevent you from doing that. that that's what I wanted to know. That's right, that's exactly. Okay, good. Yeah, great. Good. Um, any other questions or comments? Seeing none, I'm prepared to accept a motion. I'd make a motion to approve the request of Locales Taco LLC doing business as Locales Tacos e Tequila, Six Crow Point Lane for an alteration of licensed premises in accordance with the application for alteration of premises information filed with the town of Hingham on March 18th, 2022 and subject to the approval of the Alcoholic Beverages Control Commission. Second. We do a roll call vote. Liz. Aye. Bill. Aye. And Joe, aye. Approved. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you Thank all you very so much. much. Thank you. Yep. We Love look forward you. to seeing you at your place of business. Me too. Thanks Thank for you. Okay. Thanks for coming. Bye-bye. <laughs> Uh, the next item on our agenda is to consider approval of an agreement with Hingham Access and Media Inc. doing business as Harbor Media, or in the, in the alternative, a one month extension of the existing agreement. And I'd like to start by turning this over to Tom Mayo, um, who will introduce us to what's being proposed. And then I wanna make sure that we have a chance to hear from David Jones, the uh, chair of Cable Advisory, as well as Laura Burns, who is the chair of Harbor Media. But I will start with Tom Mayo. Great, thank you very much, Joe. So um, just as a quick kind of background and I'll turn it over to John in a sec for some, if he wants to put any color and detail into this, but um, regarding the, uh, what we're really doing here is renewing an expiring contract. Uh, this is a five-year contract as the last one was. It's a grant agreement uh, in essence uh, that's funded solely by Comcast and Verizon fees. Uh, we are uh, required to use those that those funds that those fees um, on public education and government coverage um, through our uh, PEG Access uh, community channel, which is what Harbor Media uh, operates uh, on our behalf through this agreement. And I think it's important to note that you know through this through this agreement, what our, what we were trying to design was a uh, a, a system that was going to allow for clear communications between the cable advisory committee, the select board, the Harbor Media team, um, and all, all with the intent of, of improving and, and continuing the, the great product that we get from Harbor Media. And, um, and you know, that's the, real, that's the real gist of this kind of an agreement. I, there's a lot of detail that goes into it. Uh, John, I don't know if you wanna cover any of the, John Coughlin, if you wanna cover any of the, um, the larger points. John Coughlin yeah, is the town's attorney here. Yes. Just, just quickly, I mean, it's a renewal, as Tom said, of a, of a five-year agreement that has expired and is, kind of, is on an extension right now. Um, we got a lot of input from both Harbor Media and from the Cable Advisory Committee. We took that input, we updated the contract language, I think, to make it more applicable to what's actually happening in the day-to-day -day operations. Um, so I think it's, I think the form is a better form than the last one. I think the agreement's a good one. Um, I think it has the support of both uh, the Cable Advisory Committee and Harbor Media. Um, it has a couple of new provisions. There's a new uh, private grant agreement uh, for private productions. Uh, about 100,000 a year will go out into the community. Um, people can apply for those grants and uh, try to improve some of the public access programming. Uh, there's increased reporting requirements. Um, so overall, I think the language of the agreement's a little bit tighter, and I think it's a, I think it's a good agreement. And there was a lot of help from John Rice and Mike Leary and 
Laura Burns and Michelle Balcone. Um, so I think it's ready for approval. David Jones. Hi, thanks for, uh, How are I'm, you? The chairman, I'm the chairman of the uh, Cable Advisory uh, Committee. Uh, a couple, two of my team members uh, participated in the, the consulting with uh, John and, and Tom on uh, doing this five-year uh, renewal. And uh, we had a meeting uh, yesterday and I'm pleased to announce that uh, our committee um, offers our unanimous support uh, for, uh, for the agreement, we're all in agreement that this is the best way going forward. Um, my, my overall take on it, it's um, the agreement sets appropriate oversight for the Harbor Media Operations is, as well as, as John had mentioned, the creation of uh, an innovative Hingham um, program fund, which will deliver high quality original programming over the course of the, uh, the contract term. And also we're, we have in it now uh, agreement that encourages more participation by Hingham mem members to enhance uh, media training, as well as the creation of more membership generated public access video programming. So overall, we're really looking forward to working with Harbor Media on the implementation of the key provisions in the agreement and uh, continue to ensure that uh, Hingham produces the best practices we can for local cable access. And I really appreciate the, all the support I've gotten from the board of uh, the select board and, uh, and John. Uh, Harbor Media has been great to work with on this. Um, Really looking forward to this. And thank you, David, for your work. Uh, I see John Rice is here. Is there anything that you wanted to add? Well, you better unmute yourself or we'll never hear you. <laughs> I to do that, but here I am. Yeah, there there you go. Go. Uh, no, we're, we're, we're very excited about the, uh, the progress that we made. And it was, um, and Tom and, and John really helped craft the agreement and the language after we, um, came up with a, a number of innovative ideas. I think the program fund is gonna be an outstanding innovative thing that not very many uh, uh, systems and, and we, we should be a leader in, the, in this field once we get this in place. So I'm very excited about that. Um, and uh, I think Harbor Media, um, you know, will, will really uh, benefit from uh, some of the provisions that we've, we've, we've designed in there. And, uh, We'll have more of a cooperation and, and oversight. And, and of course, uh, you know, in terms of this agreement, the implementation of it is going to be what's going to be key. And, and part of the, uh, the agreement is that, you know, we, we will have a little bit more oversight about how it's done with reporting and, and that kind of thing. But I think the, uh, the, the staff and uh, Michelle has done an outstanding job uh, getting Harbor Media on the right track right now. And uh, so we're, we're happy with the progress uh, they've made and we're hoping that um, we'll continue to make more progress. Terrific, thank you. Mm -hmm. Laura Burns, I believe you are the chair of Harbor Media. I am Laura Burns, 479 Main Street and the chair of the Harbor Media Board of Trustees. And I just wanna say we're really looking forward to serving the town for another five years. We appreciate the opportunity and thanks for all the hard work that's gone into this. And especially want to thank our executive director, Michelle Balcone, who is here tonight, who uh, keeps everything going. And uh, thanks to the town for this opportunity. Yes, Michelle, thank you. Uh, you're not gonna turn out the lights on us, will you? Not, not until this meeting's over, at least. Um, so Laura, what is the status? Has there been a vote of Harbor Media to approve this agreement? So the status is that there has not yet been a formal vote. We had, <clears throat> excuse me, we had a, me a board meeting on Friday to look at the draft that had come to us on Wednesday. We suggested uh, two changes, which uh, John spent all Friday incorporating into the agreement. Thank you, John. And um, we received that draft on Friday, but I, I didn't have enough time to call another board meeting between sure. Friday and now. So I have polled the board. Um, by email, and I can I can assure you that the board is prepared to vote to approve the uh, agreement. But uh, we'll be doing that at our regular board meeting, which will be Friday morning. So at this stage, we well, there's every indication it's going to be approved. It has, it has not yet been approved. So from a procedural standpoint, uh, this board would not be prepared. The select board would not be prepared to move forward to confirm a group agreement that has not yet been approved, um, although we would wanna do that as soon as possible at our next scheduled meeting. So what I'm suggesting is that we extend 
the current agreement um, so that we can, which has been approved by all parties, uh, and then ratify this agreement, uh, the new agreement, once it has been approved by Harbor Media. John Coughlin, is that consistent with your understanding of procedure? Yes, and I think we have a we have a very short extension we've done twice before, so I think we can approve the same thing again, Joe, for whatever time period you need. Great. Liz. That sounds just fine. Okay, Liz, any questions? I don't have any questions, but thank you to everyone involved. I know it was a tremendous amount of work to, to analyze the process and, and really be creative about new initiatives and, and different ways of working together. So thank you. Yes, and Bill. No questions. I appreciate everybody's work that went into this. Yes, and, and it, it has been a while. Um, and Laura, I appreciate your patience. Um, you and I have talked about this many moons ago. I'm not sure how patient I was. <laughs> I'm going to take, take that all back. We're still here. We're still, yes. Either <laughs> Michelle any... did meetings on her vacation. To get <laughs> Are there many, any members of the public with comments or questions? Seeing none, I am prepared to accept a motion uh, and this would be the extension motion. I will make a motion to sign the extension to the grant agreement between the town of Hingham and Hingham Community Access and Media Incorporated doing business as Harbor Media effective until May 15th, 2022. Second. We do a roll call vote, Liz. Aye. Bill. Aye. And Joe, aye. Extension approved and hopefully at our next meeting we will finally approve the new agreement. Thank you again. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Okay, next on our agenda, we actually have a three proclamations that the select board is going to be uh, reviewing. Uh, it's not my uh, anticipation that we'd be taking public comment uh, but we're going to go through each of the proclamations in turn. So the um, first proclamation uh, I would like to uh, take the honor to proceed with, and that is for the Town of Hingham Education and Sharing Day. Whereas Hingham is a community that is committed to excellence in education, recognizing that a quality education is one of the significant foundations for the continuing success of our state, our country and our society at large. And whereas Hingham recognizes the important contributions of its teachers, paraprofessionals, school administrators and staff in assuring high quality education for our children. And whereas April 12th, 2022 marks what would have been the 120th birthday of Rabbi Menachem Schneerson, the Lubavitcher Rebbe, a leader who was devoted to educating people worldwide and who demonstrated a profound respect for diversity, inclusiveness, and equal justice. And whereas Rabbi Schneerson recognized the importance of building character and moral values as well as intellect. And whereas in 1978, the United States Congress established his birthday as a national day to raise awareness and to strengthen the education of our children. And whereas beginning with President Jimmy Carter and continuing annually with every president through and including the current presidency of Joe Biden, a federal proclam proclamation has been issued declaring Education and Sharing Day USA and celebrating the work of Rabbi Schneerson as a thinker, leader and teacher who recognized the limits, limitless potential of every human being regardless of their background. And whereas we affirm our support for educational and social service institutions that empower our children and inspire persons of all ages. And whereas we call upon all residents of Hingham to increase their energy and dedication to the education of our youth. And whereas we call upon government officials, educators, volunteers, and citizens to reach out to those within your communities and work to create a better, brighter and more hopeful future for all. Now, therefore, we, the select board of the town of Hingham do hereby proclaim April 12th, 2022, Education and Sharing Day in Hingham. I'm prepared to accept a motion on that proclamation.
I will make a motion to proclaim April 12th, 2022 as Education and Sharing Day in the town of Hingham. Is there a second? Second. Roll call vote, Liz. Aye. Bill. Aye. And Joe, aye. So that has been voted this 12th day of April, 2022 by Joseph M. Fisher, William Ramsey and Elizabeth Klein. The second proclamation. Will someone do a proclamation on Earth Day? Are you doing Earth Day, Liz? Or are you doing Arbor Day? I think I'm, <laughs> I'm, 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 I think I'm Arbor oh, Day. Oh, yeah, I thought I was doing your okay. Earth Day. Oh, okay. I thought I was doing Arbor. I'll do Earth. I'm happy to do either one. <laughs> they're all good. They're all good and they're all important. Okay. Whereas, the town of Hingham is part of the global community is participating in Earth Day 2022 and recognizes the environmental challenges faced by all peoples. And whereas it is understood that as citizens of the global community, the town of Hingham must step forward and take action to create positive environmental changes that will support the management and care of our environment. And whereas environmental education along with awareness helps the citizens of Hingham develop the concern and skills to address the environmental challenges we face. And whereas in recognition of today's environmental challenges, trees will be planted as a symbol to our commitment to the good stewardship of all that is entrusted to our care. Whereas the town of Hingham pledges, pledges to support environmental and educational initiatives in our community that encourage others to undertake similar actions. Now, therefore, we, Joseph M. Fisher, William C. Ramsey, and Elizabeth F. Klein, Select Board of the Town of Hingham, do hereby proclaim Friday, April 22nd, 2022, as Earth Day, dated this 12th day of April, 2022. So then I will uh, make the motion to proclaim April 22nd, 2022 as Earth Day in the town of Hingham. Is there a second? Second. We do a roll call vote. Liz. Aye. Bill. Aye. And Joe, aye. Approved. And we have the Arbor Day Proclamation. Yes, Arbor Day Proclamation. Whereas in 1872, J. Sterling Morton proposed to the Nebraska Board of Agriculture that a special day be set aside for the planting of trees. And whereas this holiday called Arbor Day was first observed with the planting of more than a million trees in Nebraska and Arbor Day is now observed throughout the nation and the world. And whereas trees can reduce the erosion of our precious topsoil by wind and water, cut heating and cooling costs, moderate the temperature, clean the air, produce oxygen and provide habitat for wildlife. And whereas trees are a renewable resource giving us paper, wood for our homes, fuel for our fires and countless other wood products. And trees in Hingham increase property values, enhance the economic vitality of business areas and beautify our community. And whereas trees, wherever they are planted are a source of joy and spiritual renewal. And whereas Hingham, Massachusetts has been recognized as a tree city USA by the National Arbor Day Foundation and desires to continue its tree planting ways. Now, therefore, we, Joseph M. Fisher, William C. Ramsey, and Elizabeth F. Klein, Select Board of the Town of Hingham, do hereby proclaim Friday, April 29th, 2022, as Arbor Day in the Town of Hingham and urge all citizens to support efforts to protect our trees and woodlands support our town's forestry program and to plant trees to gladden the hearts and promote the well-being of present and future generations. Dated this 12th day of April, 2022. So Liz, I'll I'm sorry, go ahead, Bill. And I'd make a motion to proclaim April 29th, 2022 as Arbor Day in the town of Hingham. Second. Roll call vote, Liz. Aye. Bill. Aye. And Joe, aye. We are approved. All three proclamations. Thank you. Next on our agenda would be um, 
appointments, and we do not have any appointments to make uh, this evening, although I believe that we are scheduling uh, interviews uh, so that we will have some appointments coming up shortly. Uh, next is public comment for items not on the agenda. Are there any members of the public who have public comments? I am not seeing any, so we move to Town Administrator Select Board reports. Tom, I will begin with you. Not tonight, thank you, Joe. And Michelle? Yes, so our lovely 2022 warrant should be showing up in everyone's mailboxes this weekend. Wanted to thank Sharon Perfetti for all of the work that she put in putting this together. We were going for a nice springish color and light yellow was the only color available due to the supply and chain issues. So that worked out, but this should be in everyone's mailboxes this weekend. So please look for it for some school vacation reading. Thank you. And Art. I think he just had another meeting. He had to jump to. Oh, Sorry. Okay. Um, Liz Klein. Nothing to report, Joe, thank you. And Bill Ramsey. I do have a report here. I was asked to um, mention that the Weir River Estuary Park Committee in conjunction with the Straits Pond Watershed Association and the Weir River Watershed Association holds an annual Earth Day cleanup around the border of the Weir River Estuary. And this year's cleanup will take place on, oh, one second, will take place on April 23rd, 2022 from 9 a.m. to noon. They've asked uh, if anybody wants to come out and volunteer to please come out and do it. Again, it's April 23rd, 2022 from 9 a.m. to noon. Bill, do they need to call anyone in advance or just show up? Uh, just to show up. Okay, great. And I have uh, nothing to report this evening. So Michelle from Harbor Media, you are still here. We appreciate all your support. And I am prepared to accept a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Roll call vote. Liz. Aye. Bill. Aye. And Joe. Aye. We are adjourned. Thank you all.